changing rapidly. And one of the new and challenging things is knowledge co-creation in the form of citizen science. So, what is it? It's an approach that's been researched only recently in detail. We usually think it's about ordinary people helping scientists gather data. But it can be much more than this. Its goal is to generate new and legitimate knowledge and to devise new approaches and methods while empowering citizens. So how can it be used in researching biodiversity? Citizens' involvement in science happens on different levels. At crowdsourcing, citizens act as simple sensors. Higher up, they become distributed intelligence, now interpreting data as well. In participatory science, they also assist in defining the problem. And finally, in extreme citizen science, they collaborate in all the steps of research. There are many advantages to this approach, and professional scientists can learn a great deal. They can improve their knowledge and comprehension by analyzing the large data sets and the unique qualitative data collected by citizens. They can also arrive at new insights into how to mix different methods in resolving conflicts or understanding perspectives that don't understand theirs. They may learn that citizens are holders of specific, useful knowledge, and this may open up other venues for investigation. And inevitably, scientists will improve their skills for collaboration and participation. All this may result in better visibility and acceptability of science in the policy field. It can change research into a transparent, open and socially inspiring endeavor. However, let's see the big picture. Citizen science benefits citizens as well. They can increase their ecological literacy, hone their observation skills, or learn to use instruments. They are also likely to understand the nature of scientific work. But it doesn't stop here. It may also influence society as a whole by contributing to its transformative learning. What is transformative learning? It's a deep, structural shift in awareness that changes how we view our interconnectedness among the natural environment and the human community. However, the precise nature of this is still unexplored. We need to understand it in an interdisciplinary way or the greatest promises of citizen science will stay unlocked. We may never see that it can foster a general democratization of knowledge and learning thus contributing to better science-society policy interactions, potentially advancing a wider well-being for all mankind.